wanted to attempt to make a, a very quick overview of what shadow is, um, how it impacts on us and why it can be useful to work with it. So this is my speed version. Um, and I think it can be useful to start by thinking about um, a baby and when a baby is born, um, they arrive into this world and they're not polite or nice and they don't have good manners. <laughs> you know, babies aren't subtle. And if they want something, they have a way of letting us know. You know, if they're not okay, they may rage. Um, they can have tempers. Or they can be heartbroken. And if they want us, they can cling to us and need us with, with a pure, demanding grasp. Um, and they have this full range of expression available to them. And then gradually, as they get older, they start to learn, um, principally through their caregivers initially, um, that actually for you to be okay and accepted in this family or in this culture, this society, this religion or this gender, for you to really be acceptable, you're kind of going to want to listen and pay attention to certain rules or guidelines. So they might hear things like, um, oh, stop drawing attention to yourself. Nobody likes a show off. Or they might learn, um, oh, stop daydreaming. You know, you've always got your head in the clouds. They might learn uh, enough whining. That's enough now. Nobody likes a crybaby. And bit by bit, these small admonishments um, start to create the, the, the emergence of a shadow. Because what happens is we're learning this stuff, these qualities and attributes are acceptable. Do more of these, please. But these things, whining, showing off, drawing attention, mm, we don't like those. So the child makes the kind of a logical step that this stuff needs to be kind of shoved out of you then. Oh yeah, they don't like it when I do that. They don't like it when I show up in that way. I'm just going to shove it somewhere and hope for the best. More of this, less of that stuff. <laughs> and that in a very simple way is how our personal shadow is created. There's a sort of split. And because we can't see it, over time, we kind of become, uh, become unconscious to the fact that it's even there. And the really interesting thing, though, is we might do well with that up to a certain point. But over time, you see, just because we can't see it doesn't mean it's not there. And it has a certain energy to it. And sometimes it might tap us on the shoulder and try and get our attention. Say, oi. I'm still here. And what I mean by that is, I don't know if any of you have ever had the experience of maybe kind of shocking yourself. Um, it might be that the kids have left some toys out and you stub your toe and you erupt in a way that feels disproportionate and you kind of really shame yourself. Um, you're shocked and there's shame because that's not you. I don't do that. Or maybe you have a friend who shares some really good news. Maybe they've just got a promotion they're excited about. And whilst on the outside you're really happy for them, you kind of catch yourself thinking, I hope it fails. And again, you shock yourself. That's not you. You're nice, you're supportive. But here's this shocking thought that comes rushing over you. Or it might be that you're serving Sunday dinner and you serve all the really good, crispy, lovely roast potatoes for your partner. And just as you put the plates down, you give yourself the nice potatoes. And again, you shock yourself with your greed and you can't bear that thought. So you push it to the back of your mind and pretend that it was an accident. These are all some of the ways in which the shadow just can kind of leak through. An impact on us, it jars on us, it's unpleasant, it stirs up stuff that we're not, doesn't really align with the current view that we have of ourselves. But that's simply the shadow's way of letting you know, I'm still here. And in order for us to really feel whole, 
it can be useful bit by bit to actively go seeking and searching for that that's impacting on us. Bring it into the present, look it square in the eye and see if we can find a way to bring it home and integrate it. Because when we do that, we take away its potential for kind of whacking us around the head with a sharp right hook when we're least expecting it. So that's a kind of a really brief overview um, of what the shadow is, how it shows up, um, and to give you a sense of how things might be different uh, if you choose to go through the process of learning some shadow integration techniques.